Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So it's been a little while, actually, since I got to do the summary videos, which is kind of crazy, actually. Uh, the terms has been coming in that fast. I've just not quite had a chance. Uh, now, <laughs> it's quite a few things that happened this time, which is really nice. We did hit the Pyra, which was a uh, allied AE. Now, after taking a look into the actual situation, the allies do have access to a, a pretty significant number of AKEs on AEs. Not many AEs. Uh, there are about three in the Allied OOB at the beginning of the game, actually, of American ones. I'm not too sure about any other nationality. Uh, but I believe two of them start at Pearl Harbor, one of them being the Pyro, and there is another one I can't recall the name of. So we hit Pyro, so we know that's from Pearl Harbor. He does have the ability to actually convert uh, AKs to AKEs. Uh, he has a couple in Australia, actually, I think some in Brisbane, that can be converted. And uh, they only take about 12 days to be converted, so he likely does have AKEs available on hand as well. It's important to hit one of the AEs, it'd be nice if we hit more. We don't know how many he actually has in this area, but hitting any of them is a worthwhile endeavour for us over here. So we're going to try to finish it off if we can, or try and hit anything else in this area if we are so very lucky. Hopefully we will be. But what it suggests to me is an aggressive mindset. We did see a DD identified ship out here. Now I think that is a allied AVD. Likely. That's what I likely think it is. As to what it is going to be in reality, who knows about that really. I also saw an AKV. We saw the Langley out here actually. Uh, which is the uh, <laughs> uh, first US carrier I believe, isn't it? That was actually deconverted. Or converted back. <laughs> and to something else there. I'm not too sure what AKV means. I think it might be like... I know the AV there is auxiliary vessel. Um, I'm not too sure what the K stands for in this specific circumstance. But she's not bad, I suppose. She has some armament here. She can kind of look after herself. Never used the Langley, so don't know really what she's good at. She's pretty slow, but that's why she's no longer a carrier, really, isn't it? Uh, but there we go. Wow, I like these little conversions over here. <laughs> I'd be rather intrigued to actually learn a little bit of the history of the Langley, so if you guys do know, feel free to tell me. Oh, here we go. Yes, we have a Hanuman Tender, and we have the Hog Island Tender. So, there's a couple over here, Regulus. Uh, these two over here can be converted in 12 days, and he can do that from the game start, which is uh, a little bit worrying. But, uh, yeah, at least no we're dealing with them. So, I'm looking for the AVD. So, we have AVP. Not looking for that right now. Uh, so, yeah, we have here then the Clemson AVD. Now, that is a destroyer... Uh, Aviation tender, uh, essentially. They're fantastic. I'm really glad <laughs> that we don't have... No, I, I, I really want them. I'm very jealous that we do not have AVDs. But we did see a lone DD about here. And I think that was an AVD. I likely... Um, I think we'd likely see potentially PBYs operating here from Duff Island. I think one is game plan is considering we've seen assets moving up and down here, but we start to see assets moving up over here as well now. I think what it might be doing is beginning to operate in either the new Hez uh, Hebrides Islands or the Santa Cruz Islands. He's operating somewhere out here potentially, even potentially in New Caledonia. And that seems to be what he's going for there really. I think what he's going to be attempted to do is come back and hit Rabal in this area again. It's one of those of, uh, why would he do it? Well, this is it. He did draw blood beforehand. And the thing we have to bear in mind is, he doesn't know what our production is right now. We actually do have a pretty ridiculous re <laughs> production of uh, zeros, which is excellent. He may not know that. He may not know how many we have. He may expect us to have, like, uh, uh, much lower levels, essentially. So if I look at uh, with pulls... It's, it's kind of strange, actually. I'm not used to doing the summaries now, so I'm a bit, like, tongue-tied. <laughs> That's per usual. Okay. So you can see here, A6 into zeros. I mean, we are producing five a turn. I mean, this uh, shown here, 126. Yeah, there we go. That's five every day. Five every day is a massive number. We lost about 20 odd zeros here. We lost a, a number of other aircraft as well. Maybe about 20, 30, 40 aircraft lost in the airfield that day. Something around that sort of region there. We didn't lose an insignificant amount of aircraft. Obviously, it's not as significant due to our production capabilities. But in most games, I'm not too sure the Japanese would have that kind of production capability to restore that, to actually rebuild that. So he may look to actually come back to Rabal and think, right, okay. And this is why I think the AEs are very important. Because you don't bring an AE unless you wanted to actually rearm. You don't bring an AE, uh, AE 
unless you intend to stay in an area, at least for extended operations, or you think that you are going to need to rearm. And uh, this is it. What, what do you need to rearm with? The carriers probably may need to be rearmed. He may seek to stand off at a distance, potentially... Uh, I think he's going to destroy Tulagi. I think Tulagi is more than likely going to be reduced as an airfield to just nothing, essentially, by bombardment. That's what uh, I would personally do in this situation. But I think he will come back for Rabal at some point in the future. He's drawn blood before, and he may want to come back and hit Rabal's airfield once again. He's seen that he can bypass our defences uh, with enough numbers and enough power. And he knew, well, he knows he can draw blood. He, he knows now uh, he has drawn blood earlier. He may believe that he has significantly weakened our defences in the area. You've got to remember that we didn't actually fly anything from Lei, so he may think that we do not have the actual ability to do it anymore. If we indeed did at that point there, really, because he might believe that we didn't have enough numbers. I mean, we had lots and lots of numbers, which didn't have a concentrated Rabal at that time, so we didn't know he was actually going to be hitting Rabal precisely, precisely that time. But either way... Uh, we did capture the space over here, which is fantastic news, actually. So we do have our transports in and over here now. So we have the key 57s here, a number of other transports. But what we're doing now is we're having construction engineers flown into the space over here. We're going to have construction engineers arriving at Nadzab shortly, either this turn coming up or turn after. And we're going to go ahead and build these bases up to size 2 bases as quickly as possible. Uh, this one over here as well is uh, thankfully a size 1 already, which is uh, fantastic news. It means it'll be much quicker to actually go ahead and build it up to a size too as soon as we get the opportunity to do so there really so we'll have it told to expand when engineers arrive and over here yeah we're gonna start building that airfield the great thing is i'm hoping that we do get a number of days i hope he will come to attack us in rabal area but i just hope that we have a little bit more time to build this area up if we can actually establish a number of uh, other secondary airfields in this area we're going to be looking really strong actually it'd be really difficult for him to actually subdue the area without taking pretty significant losses and uh turning what was a previous victory and potentially uh, a route essentially more than home but we'll see uh, we are flying um engineers out here as well i do have a unit moving down there we probably will need to actually have a uh squad moved in there but we'll see let me double check that actually. So we do have a H6K's flying transports. Uh, yes, got a H6K. Yeah, oh, right, okay, so they're going to Kaviank. Rand, that's fine. In the future, we'll have them flown out here as well to make it quicker as there's no port. Uh, but we're going to move down here. I'm moving a unit down there to capture that base, but we're going to have Kaviank built up as well. Uh, so we do need an airfield at Kaviank. That was probably one of the weaknesses, if not, uh, yeah, definitely a weakness there. Okay. These guys in position, okay. They can go ahead and disband. We do need to have more and more supply moved into that area ASAP, really. So we're going to send out some additional fellows. There we go, send out another four here. We definitely need a lot of supply in this area. The more supply we can get in this area, the better, really, because we need about 20k there. We need similar levels of 20k at Rabal, and we need supply in other bases as well. So having that supply on hand is going to be really important, and getting it in there as soon as possible is going to be very important for us. Uh, we're trying to get to 20k here at Rabal. We should be able to manage that soon enough, actually. So yes, we do need that supply in there. I might have some supply moved to Kaviang, but uh, that should be sufficient for the time being. Okay. What we're doing over here, Panel Loblin, is I'm going to have the 11th Air Fleet unloaded over here. I'm loading up the 6th JNF, which was the unit that captured the space. And they're going to capture these other bases in the area as well. But we'll turn these guys all to general defense. And we're going to have this area turned uh, into an actual fortress, essentially. We're going to have it built up. I do have construction units on their way down here to actually build this up. So I'm looking forward to seeing it done properly. I'm going to release some APDs from Banjo Mass and touch your head into Bella Papa to go ahead and pick up some actual uh, combat units so we can go ahead and capture more bases. Uh, this supply is moving down here to Talakan, so I can actually go ahead and build up the oil refineries there. Well, oil uh, producing facilities. We do have some damage here. Um, but I do have an engineer. I do have a couple engineers in here, yeah. Only about four of them. It'll take them a long time to repair it, but it's still it's still going to be done over time. There's 24 port damage. They're repairing a little bit of damage each time. Eventually it will be fully repaired. But we do have the actual oil facilities here that are being repaired, which is very important. 
So we are producing an each and every one of them, which is good. And uh, there we go. I feel like this is a bit rambly. I think it's a bit rambly because I didn't sleep that much last night. <laughs> it's so hot. It's just so freaking hot. The UK is awful. Absolutely awful. So hard to sleep sometimes. Oh, well. Now, I was going to bring these guys in. Uh, I was going to bring this force into Samarang. I, I say to these guys too much. I was going to have this amphibious force brought into Samarang to land there. I decided actually it would make more sense, because we do not know if this has been mined either. He may have done it, I don't think so, but there's every chance he might have done. We do see the CM here. That was likely the CM that was about there. Um, it could be another one though, and I can't rule that chance out right now. But what I'm going to do then is have this force brought up over here. There being LRC AP'd, I do have additional elements of that uh, force of here, moving down towards uh, Cal... Cali Dajite... Jate... Jate... however you want to pronounce that. So then moving down here. We are going to shock attack here. Uh, we aren't going to march upon Batavia immediately. We're instead going to march upon Badoang immediately. Once we take that base, that's what we do. We march immediately inland. He's likely going to make his stand there. I'd like to try and get in a position where I can actually stop him from doing that, but I'm not entirely sure I'll be able to do that, really. I can try our best to try and delay him, really. Um, I'm hoping that our division, well, it's not a concentrated division, which is kind of a problem. I'd have preferred it to actually been a concentrated division, but unfortunately it's way too much in terms of PP there uh, to make it worthwhile. But they're going to move in there as soon as they can. We do have the infantry regiment over here at Merrick that's going to assault and take this position here. Uh, these fellows are just, they're kind of here for the time being. I'll probably have them picked up in a uh, short uh, period of time, but for now they're just going to be here. It's not a complete unit. This unit's quite spread out, actually. I'm actually bringing it together shortly. But right now, it's spread out. So even if we lost these guys, it's not too much of a loss. Obviously, losing experience and paratroopers in general isn't good, but it's not that much of a loss if we're to lose them. Uh, but he's not going to head here. But it's good to actually have control of the mountain hex, just just to make sure we have it. Uh, we'll have Merrick tomorrow, then. This base over here tomorrow. I will have aviation over here as well, so I can go ahead and fly some key 4 to freeze in here. Uh, what we need to do then is uh, shut down the aircraft of Batavia, but Batavia is not going to take much to fall. I mean, he's already moving units out there. It looks like he's abandoned Batavia, which is fine in my opinion. If you want to abandon it, that's great. Uh, we'll take it then, no problem. It's a great port, it's nice airfield, we'll make use of it. I was going to have these fellows land over here, but I thought rather than actually go ahead and try and take control of the entire island at once, we might as well concentrate on one part of the island, pacify one part of the island, then deal with Sotobaya. I mean, Sotobaya is actually clear terrain, uh, so it shouldn't be any real problem though with it being clear terrain. There are mountainous hexes, though, and that's the problem. I need to try and get something down here. But there's only so much we can do. It is going to take some time to actually clear Java out completely, because he will have these men uh, go to ground in the Times Street terrain. Um, he's likely going to be a hoarding supply there, really. The good news is because we do have Louvs on, which is going to inevitably be finished up shortly enough. We have that working for us. So we'll have additional divisions that are freed up after Luzon has been conquered. I mean, Mindanao will probably need about... Uh, I'll probably send a division or two divisions to Mindanao to make sure it's done quickly. Uh, beyond that, we have two divisions that can be sent wherever we like. We have a brigade that uh, can be sent wherever we like. I will. I probably will have the brigade reside in Manila, perhaps for a time, because we do have a garrison requirement there that is pretty significant, 140. I'm going to have to take a look at actually trying to satisfy these garrison requirements, which is going to be easier said than done, actually. So, naval guardians will likely be sent there to lose on to make sure we can actually hold on to it and uh, not lose any VP. Uh, we do have our forces making a mad dash north. Uh, these fellows are going to be moving to Georgetown to pick up the units there. These fellows are moving north. These guys are going for the invasion of Nagui, however you want to pronounce that. So this is going to be Imperial Guard A Detachment, they'll land there. Right, so they'll be shifting out. And then we do have Imperial Guard B. This is B and C Detachment, they're going to be hitting the uh, tougher base, however. I do need to make sure that they are sent there. I'm glad that I picked that one up. They are going to be sent to Tavoy, which is times free terrain, so I do need to have that. So they're going to be sent out that way. They are carrying about 6,000 supply there. Not a huge amount, but it's about 1,000 supply there. I will get another 3,000 or so supply moved uh, from ships that are already loaded when they arrive at Georgetown. I'll probably have them detached and sent north. But yeah, I mean, there's supply that can be shifted. Georgetown, we could have supply shifted from Georgetown if we so wish to do so. Uh, but we're going to have supply shifted to this road. As long as I get supply into this road, as long as I get units onto this road, we can start marching in here. 
I'm going to have the Zeros of Hita Chiang Mai actually stood down to rest this turn, and then we're going to start to sweep Rangoon. I'd like to get these Zeros from Banjamarsen uh, up north, and we'll be doing that shortly. I'm probably going to go ahead and transfer them from Banjamarsen uh, to Singapore, likely, and then transfer them north, perhaps. Or we could just fly them straight to Bangkok, either or. We'll have to see what the situation looks like at that time. But getting two Zero Squadrons out here be really good. We're looking solid in Burma. I was hoping that we would have had the supply this turn, but it's getting closer and closer now. We did shoot down a number of actual Hudsons, I believe it was. Uh, some Buffaloes. Would have been nice to shot them all down. Would have been even better to shoot down some hh ones but still good. So he may not bomb them this turn, which is nice. That saves them a little bit of damage there. I need that supply situation resolved, but I also need to make sure we can actually cover them by air. So if I wanted to, I could put them into rest mode and reduce the amount of supply consumption that they would uh, have, really. But once we actually have this major road here, once we have supply of these bases here, and that supply has been moved north, we're going to look really good. It'll be really good for us there. Moving inland, I do have a unit that's marching in towards Tungo, so that's looking great there. I don't know how tough the units are here, but I'm sure if we can kick them out, it'd be nice to actually deny him that base. It's only a size 1 base, it's one of those where it's not that important for him, really. But if we can actually force him to use bases that are closer, it means they're actually closer to our own um, ability to strike out, perhaps. It doesn't particularly make a difference, he could shift them, but forcing him to move away is good. If he has any aircraft that are somewhat damaged or something of that nature, we might be able to get them. He's probably in good shape, but we'll see, who knows. In China, I do have this unit here, the 104th. What I'm instead going to do here then is, because he may be looking to um, move into Hong Kong perhaps, so what I'm going to do is have a unit move to Hong Kong. I'm going to have a unit moved instead back to Canton, and we'll take it like that. What I'm going to do then is actually have this unit here march back here. He might be going to Swatow. I don't know, I'm not too sure what he's doing there. I will have a unit continue to chase the enemy here, just in case we do get the chance to actually attack him. It'd be worthwhile. I'm not too sure why he's doing that, but it uh, can't be good either way, really. I do have divisions march on to these two hexes here. It's a major road, and it's both clear, so I'd like to try and crush those cores there and try and stop this road at this moment in time. Should be nice. I'll probably have them march back afterwards. I just don't want to have Chinese units near our own bases, just in case. Uh, do have our forces marching here. I'm going to have one of the actual divisions uh, rail to Xinjiang. Uh, 40th Division, which has just arrived in Hex here. I'm actually going to have... Well, let's see. I need to have it used against a four-size tough. And that's clear terrain. That's wooded terrain. I'm going to have it sent against the wooded terrain Hex. The other division can be marched. Uh, sorry, it will be moved by rail here. And then it'll go north along the rail. Or I might even have it moved over here, where there's three units and have them deal with that. Yeah, that's what we're doing there. Issue is with Xinyang is the road goes from secondary to a trail and it's just it's just not worth doing. And we do have our forces launching themselves here. I'm gonna go for a deliberate attack here to try and reduce the amount of disruption and fatigue that we might potentially get. There is a 300 AV core here. The rest is pretty much trash. But I don't want to have our forces essentially uh, destroyed there really. That's what I want to avoid there. We do have our forces march in here. It's looking good. Yeah, we'll be in this hex then shortly. The units are marching over here. What I'm going to do then is have one element of a division sent back here. Uh, the other two elements are going to march on here. And then probably what I'll do then is if we need one, I can march one back. If not, we'll continue to push on forward, really. Uh, we'll be crossing here then. I think it will be tomorrow that we'll be crossing. Yep, everybody's in uh, combat mode. So we'll be going across there then with not quite as much AV as I wanted, about 1200 AV. Uh, but we'll be shock attack across the river here. And then we'll begin marching along here. I actually do have an armored car company, so I could potentially make a little bit uh, more speed along here. So we're looking good. We're looking good. I apologize for the <laughs> little bit of a... Uh, uh, not exactly a great commentary. Not exactly a great commentary this time. I promise it will be better. Once the weather cools down a bit, and my god, I get that sweet, sweet, like, lose to sleep, the commentary will be better. <laughs> We're looking good, really. We are looking good. We're in a position now, at least, where, well, we have things working in our favour. 
I think the big thing really for us was having the fall of Clark. I think that was huge. I mean, we are going to continue to bombard out here. I've gone ahead and taken a look at some of the actual artillery units over here and stood them down. There was like a smaller 80 odd millimeter mortar section uh, battalion, whatever you want to call it. That was actually fired upon the enemy here at uh, Manila. Obviously, they've been far out range, so they were taking a lot of damage. So I told them to stand out. Other units as well, like this unit over here, sadly, the 32 centimeter mortars are all disabled for the time being, which is a real big shame. So I'm going to have them stood down to rest. Uh, there's enough. Yeah, there's enough support here, so they should recover quickly enough. It's just a shame because those are big ass mortars and I wanted them actually to be usable here, but we'll have to wait. It should come online quickly enough. But yeah, we're going to keep on hitting Manila. Wait for that fatigue and disruption to go down and then we'll attack again. I mean, the beauty is it's always harder the first time around because we don't have as much in the way of preparation. Luckily, we did have some preparation. I think we had more preparation than when we first attacked Clark, which was useful. Uh, but this is it. Because we don't have, have as much preparation, it's a little bit tougher, the casualties are a little bit higher, damage isn't as good. But this is it, really. Things will get even easier. He's down to level 2 fortifications and a level 2 hex, sorry, in times 2 terrain. It's never going to be as tough as times 3, which is nice. So we'll see even less casualties next turn, ideally. We'll take the fortifications down again, and then we'll take them down again, and then we'll win, essentially. So it might be either two more attacks, it might be three more attacks. But uh, Manila is essentially, it's times numbered. After Manila, we march then on to Bataan, and Bataan will be quick cleanup. I might have a division march south then to make sure we can clean these units up over here. After that, we'll go ahead and deal with Mindanao, and, and then we're looking great, really. We're looking good then. We're getting there. We are getting there. Go ahead and take a look at our R&D and see what we have here. And we're just getting closer and closer to where we want to be now, which I'm looking forward to. Yep, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting those Nicks. Can't wait to have Nicks. You can see the key 49 1A Helen over here. It's pretty close. Once that is at 30, we can have that change down to the 2A Helen, which is a armored Japanese medium bomber. I cannot wait until we have that. So... Uh, we've got a free over here at uh, Hamamatsu. Uh, free over here at Bashi. Oh, look at that. We've got a four over here at Okayama. Really nice. Uh, two frees over here at Osaka, Kyoto. Liking it. Free here at Tokyo. Yeah, it's to make that progress. That's a bit of a shame about that being zero. The one of the zero, not great, but that well. So there we go, we're looking good. Uh, we do have another Thai division that will be marching into Thailand shortly. The uh, third RTA, uh, it's other units over here. I might potentially have that actually. Uh... Well, they're going to have to. Well, no, I might as well get them marching. We can have them recombined when they eventually reach their destination. There's no point waiting a day to have them combined. I don't really get much from it. But we're looking good there, really. We do have our forces ashore at uh, Java. I'm going to continue to unload supply over here at Java. Just make sure we have the uh, assets required, really. And then we will back off then. But uh, it helps to have these assets here. We're clearing the mines out. Uh, we do have the SW here. We have the service combatants over here. So we're moving in then. Move more forces in here. We'll look good. I mean, probably what I'll do is have a division move forward. I might even bring the regiments forward over here then to make sure we take that. The uh, naval guards and the regiments will be moved across over here as well, and they might be the forces to take Batavia, really. But if he's going to abandon Batavia, that'll make it super easy to take. Uh, we just need to kick him out of the mountains. If we kick him out of the mountains, and then that's it. His AV is more or less gone then. He does have mountains and jungle roof. That's the only problem here. It's probably not going to be an easy fight. It'll take a while, especially when there's no roads over here. Um, so in all honesty, the best thing we can do then is... We'll have to see. We'll, we'll see what it's like tomorrow. We'll take the base tomorrow. It might be that we take every other base that we can, and then we come back to deal with them, just leave a unit on top of them, just to keep them busy. But this is it. You need them either to surrender, or or you need to be able to just wipe them out. I think probably what we'll do then is move a regiment over here. Maybe two regiments, maybe three regiments. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll see how things turn out. He does have these nine units over here. If they don't move to the mountain hex, we can manage it. And he's in clear terrain right here. It might even be worthwhile to potentially move into clear terrain to actually attack him. I could have tanks move in there before he leaves, which would be really important if we are very lucky. We'll see about that. He might have expected to uh, expected us to land with less strength, perhaps. Not too sure. But we'll see. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to seeing you in the future. So goodbye for now.